this is Brenda and welcome. We're going to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator, but just the basics, okay? Now, the first thing that you need to do is download the software. Where are you going to find it? In Creative Cloud. Remember that you need to have an access to the account, you have to pay for it, or the school will provide it to you. So, once you have it, what are we going to do? I am using a Mac, so I have all my software just right here. We are going to click the one that says Adobe Illustrator 2024. Yes, I am creating the video this year. So once you have it, this window is going to be shown. So if you want to download it, pause the video, download the software, and then continue and play. And once you have it already done, what are we going to do? When you click it, if you're using a Mac, this is going to happen. If you're using a PC, probably you had to double click it and then the same windows more or less is like the same. You're going to have this window and the first thing that you're going to see are some tutorials. They are free, they're really short. Some of them are eight minutes, five minutes. It's always good to take a look to them because they usually show you like the new features, like the new tools, because they are always, always renovating and improving all the tools that are going to be available for us designers, okay? Now, once we have this, you're going to see that there are other tutorials and even here you can search for more tutorials if you have a specific need. Now, what else do we have? At the top, we have the cloud. You can save it on the cloud. I recommend to do it if you have always a good access to the internet because if you don't, uh, it's going to be really painful. This is for searching for a specific tool or, or a doubt that you have. This is a special promotion that you can have when you buy the software or when you pay for the rent every month. And this is like your account, okay? This is mine, I don't have any picture, but it's because, you know, you never know how the picture is going to be used. Now, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to click where it says new file. Now, this is important. I know that it's the beginning and right now you're like, oh, come on, Brenda, it's a piece of cake. But -uh -uh. you always have to keep in mind how you're going to use the product that you're going to design. Are you going to print it? Are you going to show it through a screen, television? Are you going to show it, I don't know, in a, in a laptop, in a phone, iPad? Why this is important? First of all, because of the use of color. Second of all, the use of unit. Third of all, because you have to design in a specific size, okay? So I'm going to group like the ones that are going to be more common and how you can use them depending on how you're going to share it, okay? So we're going to start with the ones that are called digital. Digital means that it's not going to be printed, it's only going to be seen through a screen. A screen, remember that it's not just a computer or a television iPad and phones are included. That's why, for example, when you select mobile, you're going to see all the presets that are available right here. They have usually Mac, they have iPads, they have even Androids available. And of course, if there is one that you already have the size, but it's not available, the good thing is that right here on the right side, you can type down the size. Now, what is important here? You're going to see that they're using pixels as unit. So, pixels is the size that you have, for example, in the screen. When you make a line, you know, from one is corner to the other one and just below, that is the size of pixels. Now, if you have too many pixels, higher quality, okay? Now, landscape is a position or the orientation that you're going to have with the artboard. It can be vertical or it can be landscape. Artboard means how many pages or, I don't know, how many arts you're going to have in the same document okay now why this is important for digital well the thing is that what is not going to be printed mobile web film and video okay this is something that you know from the beginning that you're not going to print it's going to be shown through a screen it maybe it's going to have animation like here in film and video and that's it so the unit that you're going to use for these three, it's going to be pixels, okay? Now, how about if you want to print it? Well, we have this option, print an art and illustration, okay? Print is going to have all presets of formats that are available, I don't know, 
in every store in Mexico. For example, Office Depot, Office Max, Lumen. Usually in Mexico, we use the letter size. If you're in Europe or United States, they use the A4, the following one. And the units that are commonly used for something that is going to be printed is going to be points, picas, inches, feet. You know, in the United States, they usually use feet, yards, millimeters, centimeters, and meters, okay? Now, what is the difference between digital and something that is going to be printed? Usually when something is digital, the colors are going to look really bright, you know? And usually you're going to use a color mode called RGB. We're going to see that in a couple of sessions, but it's a brief introduction, okay? But when you print it, sometimes, I don't know if you have seen that, you see this bright color in the computer and you print it, you know, at home, and then the orange instead of orange becomes brown well the thing is that light that has is just uh, you know at the back of the colors in the computer makes it brighter paper it doesn't so we're going to see how we can manage it and how can we get really 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 nice colors when we're going to make a design okay so what else if you have been you know taking a look to all the clicks that i have been doing you're going to take a look at the bottom but there are some templates this is just like Canva, like PowerPoint. There are designs that are already available for you to use them. The thing is that if you are going to create something, how about creating something new, original, unique? I mean, you can use this one, but how many people have used it before? That's why sometimes when we're scrolling down Instagram, we see many designs that look alike. Why? Because they're using templates, okay? so. They exist if you want to do something that is not going to be commercial, it's something that you want to do for your family and friends. But if you want to do it for a brand or you want to do it for yourself because you want to be creative, please avoid them. That doesn't mean that you can't use them. Of course, I have used them. I even used one thank you note. Let me show it to you because I want to be honest. Let me see if it was in printing. I don't remember, but there is a thank you. Yes, here it is. <laughs> because I wanted to do a card and I didn't have the time, you know, to think that much. So there's options here available for you. I mean, maybe you want to do a meal plan, maybe a daily planner. If they already exist, why not? But that doesn't mean that we have to always to use them for our specific project. Try to innovate. You are capable to do so. You just have to feed your brain and your eyes and we're going to do it through the semester, okay? Now, once you have selected here, a print again is for printing, art and illustration is for printing or for digital. If you take a look here, when I just click it, you're going to see that there are different formats. This is in points, for example, right now. If I change it into pixels, you're going to see that there is no more change right now. Some of the numbers have been here placed, but here you have like the size in pixels. Now, that doesn't mean that you can only use the ones that are available there. For example, if you want to design this credit card, you have to type down in centimeters in this case. The width is eight centimeters. The height is a five, if I'm not wrong. Hey, double click and then five. Be aware to select the unit that you're going to use it and the position if you want to have it like this, or if you want to have it like that, you know, automatically it's going to change. Bleeding is an option that we're going to use when in two more sessions. It's an extra that you place when you are uh, placing color, okay? It's like, for example, when you want to cut something, you always put an extra, so it always keeps like the same green color. You don't want it to, I don't know, if you print it in white paper, you don't want to have like the white borders, okay? That is bleeding. In Spanish, it would be sangrado, okay? And here, this is really, really important. Now, when we talk about printing, you have to consider the following clues. Please write them down. This is important for you, not only for the class, for the future and for your personal and professional life. I can assure you that. If you're going to print it, the color mode is that you're going to use is cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Now, these four colors, you have seen them in your printers at home, you know? The blue color is called cyan, the pink color is called magenta, and yellow and black, well, yellow and black. Now, every time you go to an, I don't know, to an institution where they print, you know, 
books and posters and they're, they're not digital printing that they have, you know, that they make uh, films for each color and so on. They usually receive the files in cyan, magenta, yellow and black. But if you're going to print it in Office Depot, Office Max, Lumen, try to have it as RGB, okay? Because RGB is going to keep some bright colors. Now, for high resolution, for a magazine, for a book, please, cyan, magenta, yellow and black. For school projects, you can keep it in RGB, okay? Now, if you're going to do it through the web, for example, you're going to share something that you're going to place on a web page, the color mode that you're going to use is RGB. RGB means red, green, and blue. When these three colors are mixed together, you get white, okay? And this is physics thing. And if you have, a, a, I don't know, a bulb, a machine, you know, a light, you, you're going to see that every time you are generating light, you're combining red, green, and blue, okay? We're going to see this when we learn about color. And what else is important in this area, just right here on the right of the table. You have the raster effects. Now, again, this is important. If you're going to print it high quality because you have this beautiful magazine, you know, that you have pictures and you have brands and you have products and so on, it has to be in the higher resolution. The higher resolution always, always, always is going to be 300 points per inch. That means how many points you're going to place in one inch, in the size of one inch. Usually this is one, one, one inch, okay? Now, if you're going to print it for a newspaper, for a school project, you know, bond paper, you know, that is white one, the resolution that I suggest is 150. It's not bad but it's not the highest one, but it's not the lowest one, okay? So if you're going to print something like a poster, 150 works good. It's not the best, but it works. And if you're going to share it through the screen, your phone, your iPad, the best one is 72, okay? You can have here 36, but as you can see, there's not even like a name for it, high, medium screen. Why? 36 is commonly used for icons, you know? For those small icons and stickers that or emojis that you have in your phone, you're never going to enlarge them, right? You're going to keep them always in the same size. As a suggestion, so 72 is okay. So once we have it here, what else should I include? We have seen here. We have seen some templates that are available. You can clip them all. Here you have the thank you notes. As I told you, they're already available just for printing. And for today, we're going to focus in art and illustration, please. Instead of selecting poster, postcards and so on, we're going to select letter because it's the one that is commonly used in Mexico. And instead of having one artboard, I'm going to click and I'm going to place two, okay? So once we have it like that, please click where it says create. Keep in mind the RGB, the R resolution, the cyan, magenta, yellow and black because we're going to continue seeing this in the future. And it's important that it's safe right here in your brain, okay? so. What you're going to see, the gray area is where you can place objects and illustrations or, I don't know, figures that you're not going to use. My suggestion will be like, keep it clean. You know, it's like having your desk, desktop clean. I mean, you don't need to have saturated with things and posts and a lot of the stuff. That is my suggestion. And my recommendation is based on if you have too many elements that you're not using, the file is going to become bigger, bigger in size. And there's no need for that okay so everything that we have right here from this area and floating they're called windows okay the one that we have right here where I'm clicking and moving is called the toolbar okay everything that you see in the top is called the upper menu okay and of course we have at the bottom let me move I'm a floating face ah everything that we have at the bottom is going to help us to define, for example, the percentage of viewing the document, uh, the position that you are, if you want to be in page number one, in page number two, and so on. So, we're, uh, if you get a closer look, I'm going to make it closer for you. To get shortcuts, I, I hope you like shortcuts because that's something that I prefer. For example, this is a hand that is moving through the document, as you can see. I can go to the top at the bottom. 
I am holding and pressing the, spy, the space bar in the keyboard. So even though you have a Mac or PC, it works for both the same way. So if you want to move, you just have to press it and then click the mouse or the, um, the area of the computer. I just forgot the name right now, but that area, the, the square that is in the middle of the laptop. So next step, if you want to see both pages or just one, if you want to see one, command zero. Okay. Oops, sorry. I press command O. Command zero is just for one page. How do I know it's one page? Well, this is the one that I have right here. Okay. If you don't like to press common zero because you don't like shortcuts, it's okay. At the top, upper menu, you're going to see views, you're going to see zoom in, zoom out, fit in window, fit all in window, and so on. I mentioned command because I have a Mac. If you're using a PC, it will be changed to control, control zero. Okay. Now, in the toolbar, I'm going to place it right here in the middle so the white background helps me to explain it better. It is divided depending on the use. That means that the first ones are going to be for a specific use, in this case, selecting. The other ones are going to be for drawing. The other ones for transformation and so on. If you keep the mouse like I'm doing right now for a couple of seconds, automatically the software is going to show you small, small videos of how you can use them. And this is good because in case you forget how to use it, the software is going to be really nice and kind and it's going to tell you, hey, this one is for doing this. Okay. Now, as today, this is a brief introduction. How are we going to meet the software? So right now I have two pages. Okay. In my upper menu, I have the pre-selection, for example, for fill color, line color, stroke weight, and so on. If I want to add or delete pages, the software knows that we don't think like everyone does. I mean, maybe your right brain works better than your left brain. Maybe you like life to be complicated, maybe you like it simple. So the software always give you three to four ways to do the same action. So I'm going to show to you how you can add and delete pages in the document, depending on what do you prefer and what do you like. Okay. So we're going to start for the hard way because I believe that life is simple. Okay. So the hard way will be file, document setup. You have this and it's going to tell you the units. If we are in Mexico, we're going to select centimeters. Okay. And then we're going to click where it says edit artboards. And here you're going to have this window. It's going to tell you, okay, this that is in blue is the one that is selected. So I can change the size tabloid, for example, you see that it's going to be overlapping here. I can make it smaller, like an iPad. I can select like, let's see, BGA, you know, television. I can change the position, vertical, landscape. Or in case I want to change the size, I'm going to hold the mouse or the finger, you're going to place it in the square. I forgot the name, I don't know why and you're going to move it right here. Okay. Now, this is one way to transform and edit the artboard. Another way, when I get out of the white area with the document, you can see that I have this small icon. This one is going to help me to create a new document just by holding mouse. As you can see, I am creating a new document. The size is custom. I don't know what is the size, but the software is going to help me. Let me move my floating face right now. When I have this one selected, you're going to see that here they're telling you the size 16 centimeters, 16.5 by 27.1. So this is the size of artboard number four. I can change it just by moving this and automatically this has to change. Or I can come here and place the numbers that I want. The size that you see right there is the size that belongs to this credit card. Okay. Eight by five centimeters. Now this is one way. Okay. As you can see, like you need to know the numbers, you need to know the sizes in case, I don't know, your teacher tells you, please, I need in tabloid size. I need a new page. What are you going to do? You can select one of the artboards like I just have right here. 
then come here and select tabloid, right? Now, if you want to move the pages that are, you know, overlapping here, you just have to select them and move them apart. Why this is important? Because in the end, when you print, you don't print, you know, one page over other, right? You always print single pages. If you want to add and you don't want to click and drag it and do it, the other way to do so is here where you see the plus sign, you click this one and this one you can change and define the size that you want for it. For example, tabloid and that's it. Okay. Now, in case you have all of this and you're going to use only one, but you already have three, how can you delete it? Easy way. Press backspace in your keyboard, have it selected, you know, I want to select this one, backspace. You don't like to do that, it's okay. You can come here to the top menu and click the trash can, okay? Now, what else can we do? As I told you just before, it was by going to File, Document Setup. Let me show you the other way. The other way is by opening the window called Artboards, right here. This window is going to help me to define the position of the artboards and even the order, you know? So how can you add? There are two ways. One of them is by clicking new artboard. It's going to have the size of the one that is already there as a reference, for example. The other way is by clicking at the bottom, new artboard, you see? The other way will be, as you have this option available, you can create it here and the artworks are going to be named here. So if, for example, this one is for the credit card front, this is for the back, this is for the paper that is going to be protecting, and this is for the envelope, you can come here and double click and name it. Okay, I'm going to select this one. This is protection. This one is going to be the front and this one is going to be the back. Why this is important? Because in case you're going to edit something, you're going to see the number right here, the number and the name, and you're going to have an idea of what you are editing, okay? That is one way to do so. So with the window artboard, you're capable to move it. Now you can move it in the position right here in the list in the artboard, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be changed here in the area. That means that when you print it, first they're going to print front, back, then they're going to print envelope, and then they're going to print protection, even though you move the position here, okay? They're going to follow the position that you have just right here. That's why they have these small arrows, so you can move the position where you're going to be placing it when you print. So for now, or by now, we already know two ways, documents, file, documents, adopt, window, artboard. Is there an easy way to, to do so and to add and, you know, modify the artboards? Of course. How? Right here at the bottom, just above the hand, you're going to see this icon, you know, this one. And this one is fabulous because you just have to select, delete, draw, drag, and that's it. At the same time, you can define the size at the top, you know, right here because automatically this upper menu is going to be available for you. So this is how you can create, add, de uh, delete new artboards in your document. So this is a brief introduction of Adobe Illustrator. I hope you don't have any doubts. Try to, to draw some pages and change the size. Remember that paper is always going to be in a shape of a rectangle or a square. So I know that probably you want to have something that is going to be rounded, but that's another thing and it has to be considered in printing. So any questions or doubts, write me. I'll be glad to help you. So see you in the next video.